Hi, I'm Greg Matheson, the uh, Chief Operating Officer of Newfound Gold Corp. And we're here at the core facility for our Queensway project located in central Newfoundland. Today we're going to take a look at the JBP drill core that we had recently announced on March the 9th of 2022. It's important for us to, to look at the differences and some of the similarities between the, the JBP mineralization and that that we see up at the Appleton Fault where we have the Keats and Lotto and Golden Joint Zones. At the JBP Fault we have uh, several zones located along 12.4 kilometers of strike length, the more prominent of which is the 1744, uh, H-Pond and Pocket Pond zones, all of which share very similar characteristics along roughly three kilometers of strike length. 1744 actually stands for 1744 grains of gold, which was found in the till. Newfound sent, uh, sent us out to do those tills. We took them. Once we got out there, we started discovering quartz everywhere with visible gold. Uh, hence, that's where the, the newest discovery came from. Often what we see with the drill core is a very uh, broad vein system. Often the veins are measuring anywhere from 10 to uh, 100 centimeters. If we look at some of the sections here of the drill core, the mineralogy that we see within the veins is often very similar to the Appleton Fault. Right in front of us today is a drill hole uh, NFGC 21195. Within this veined interval, we had a subsection that graded 16.7 grams per ton over 2.8 meters. And within that, we can see individual grains of gold. Often these grains of gold are anywhere from two to five millimeters across and, and are typically contained within the quartz veins. I think the importance that we understand about the JBP is this is in addition to the heavy exploration drilling that we're doing over at the Appleton Fault. That we've got another parallel system, a system that's uh, far less understood and, and far less explored and, and contains significant potential and is projected to pass throughout the Queensway project uh, along its 100 kilometer strike length. We're in the discovery days of this fault structure and we're starting to see the early stage drilling start to take shape, producing high grades across reasonable widths. And certainly the thing that we see that's very encouraging along the JBP fault is, is the level of predictability of this system along its strike length. It's often quite well behaved and we're, we're able to trace it for considerable distances even with a limited amount of drilling out to say 3,000 plus meters of strike length and there's several kilometers beyond that that has seen no drilling to date and the team's working on uh, planning phases of doing some additional drilling along strike. So looking forward to some of the real highlights of, of what's maybe to come on the JBP fault. Historically have been a number of very high grade float rocks that have been found adjacent to the fault. And the float material is angular so that means the chunks of rock that have come from the bedrock haven't come very far and there are delicate grains of gold in the pieces that we've seen, it just tells you that the source uh, of those high-grade boulders is very close. When you got those pristine gold grains, most of the time you will find it in the rock, and most of the time in that rock. The glaciation hasn't moved things very far, so we know that those boulders have come from somewhere on the JBP fault in all likelihood. Some of which have graded you know, 50, 80 grams per ton. There's records of a roughly one meter boulder uh, that was found north of the 1744 zone and it graded 798 grams per ton. It just goes to show you how much gold is actually here in the rock. Now, where does it come from is the next question. The team's really looking at various vectors to help us further define high grade zones with, within the, the fault structure. We're, we're certainly looking forward to the prospects of, of continued exploration along the JBP fault. <laughs>